in the gospel of St. Mark, the ninth chapter, 14 through 29, and I ask that the scriptures be read throughout its entirety, but I'm just going to focus in on the 23rd, 24th verse, but I wanted you to know the whole discourse of that text. Our subject matter, though, will be drawn out of the 23rd and 24th verse. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, and I like by the interpretation of the New English Bible, if thou can, all things are possible to him that believeth. You can believe. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. I want to talk about the power and difficulties of faith. The power and difficulties of faith. Let me first give you the background of the text. Uh, the subject draws out of an emphasis that Mark only recalls. Matthew and Luke writes about this event, but Mark only records this particular statement in such a way. It derives out of the healing of a demon-possessed leg. Jesus has not long descended from the Mount of Transfiguration. And on his way down, he saw a crowd of people coming to meet him. And as he drew near to them, he noticed that there was a dispute going on in which his disciples were in the middle of. He perceives that there is some controversy going on about them. So upon meeting this crowd, he asked them a question. He addressed the question to those who seemed to be so concerned about his disciples. And the question is, what question ye with them? What's your business with them? What is it that you are questioning them about? The crowd became silent and didn't speak, but an individual whose interest in the matter was deeper than the questions spoke up and said, Master, my son has a dumb spirit which has caused him to be unable to speak and even caused him to suffer epileptic seizures. And I spoke to thy disciples about healing him and they couldn't. Jesus said, Bring him here. I'm skipping a little bit there, but you know the context. Bring him here. Now as they brought the boy, the demon seeing Jesus and knowing who he was, and that his control over him would soon be ended, he launched a final attack on the boy. He threw the boy into terrible convulsions. Verse 20 rolled him in the fire and, 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 and he, didn't, he didn't do it in no short order. He, he did it in such a long state of time. Rolling him and tossing him and whipping him and causing him to gnash and foam at the mouth. Finally, when it was over, uh, not quite over really, it hadn't quite ended, Jesus asked the father like any good doctor would do, he asked about the boy's history. He says, how long has he been this way? Uh, how long has he been like this? The father said, from a child. And he said, it's not just no uh, mishaps or accidents that he keep on having these kind of situations. It's no accident that he keeps on giving these suicidal young maniacs. But uh, from a child, 
he's been this way and, and I've ascertained that he has a demon in him that keep on treating him this way. For this happens often. Verse 22. Then comes the request. If thou canst do anything, help us. You can do anything. We, we, we need your help. The Father does not question the compassion of Jesus, but he does question Jesus' ability to cope with this desperate situation. Huh? If you can, he says. The father's faith had been shaken by the failure of the disciples and lessened by the severity of the case. I can't get help nowhere for this boy, and I just don't know what to do. And I thought maybe those who walked around you, those who were close to you, those who seemed to have exerted some power of healing, I can recall when somebody told me that one day they went through the city and demons ran before them and the sick got up and was made whole. The lame walked and the dumb talked and, and I thought maybe, just maybe, they could do something. But they weren't able. Now, if you can, will you help us? If you'll note, he identifies himself with the misery of his son, for he says, help us. We, we, we're both in bad shape. I, I'm going through the agony and turmoil of my child's sickness and don't know what to do about it. And my child is miserable in the sickness that he's in, so we're both in bad shape. We, we need your help. So Jesus, in order to begin the means of aid to this father's need and the child's healing, Ask the father another question. It's, it, if you look at the question, he says, If thou canst believe, uh, all things are possible. Hmm? It's not if I can, but rather canst thou believe. Uh, I got the ability, I have the power, I can do it if I want to. It's not if I can. It's if you believe it. That, that, that's where it lies. That, that's where it's at. Uh, that, that, that's where it's at. You see, all things are possible to him that believe it. That, that's what Jesus is saying. Now, it's out of the Father's answer that we address our subject. For the Father says, Lord, I believe, but I help thy my unbelief. Oh, that, that is. That there's power and yet difficulty in faith. Huh? The power is, if I can, it can be done. The difficulty is, how can I? Huh? I'm baffled by the inability of your disciples to do it, and I'm lessened in faith by the troubles I've been going through trying to get it done. That's what's that. that that's what's that. Now, now, the story of this father's dilemma with his son is a striking illustration of the power and the difficulties of faith. You see, faith, faith can be very paradoxical. Huh? Yes, it can. Uh, it's strange how one can have within them the power of faith, which can heal, and at the same time, the difficulties which can cause faith. Yeah, they, they can be there. They can be there. You'll struggle with both of them right there in you. Paul, Paul gives us an example of what this paradoxical struggle is like. Paul, in writing in the Romans, the 7th chapter, the 18th verse, Paul says, that for I know 
that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will, listen, for to will is present with me. Uh, it, it, the power is there. Uh, the, the will is within me. Uh, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Uh, I have a struggle trying to get it done. It, it's there. The power is there, but, but how to do it. How to perform it. That, that's what a problem is. See, the father believes, but his faith, faith is, de is defective. Its, it's, it's defect needs the master's aid. But now I got it, but I need your aid to do it. Uh -huh. I need your aid to do it. He believes and yet at the same time has about him a reminder or a remainder of unbelief. It is though he is saying, I do believe, but my faith is weak. But you can strengthen it so that whatever of my unbelief is there, you can take it out. And if you take it out, I can obtain blessings and healing for myself. Huh? You see, I, I, I put it out on the front, Lord. I believe, but, 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 but I've got some doubts. My doubts are predicated upon my circumstances and conditions. But you, you able to take that doubt I have and make it into the faith I need. And then I can obtain the blessing. I, I mean, I, you know, I understand what Paul meant now when Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That, that's how I make it. See, not on my faith. Lord, if I had to go to heaven this morning, on my faith, I'd miss it. But it's on his faith that glory's gates will open for me. Huh? That, that, that's where it's at. That's where it's at. Now, the words of this father for forth then, our uh, father sets forth the striking truth that affects our times in which we live. The difficulties of belief in our age are without denial. We got more unbelief. Lord help me. How many people do you think leave church every Sunday and go home defeated by doubt and unbelief? How many people do you think come every Sunday sit in the sanctuary somewhere under some preacher and hear the blessings of truth and care back that thing they broke that they wanted to get rid of. Huh? How many? It's very prevalent, isn't it? You see, you see, unbelief is one of, one of the strongest and most difficult problems of our time. Dr. Tim LaHaye, in his latest book, The Battle of the Mind, says that the humanist uh, obstacle is to conquer the church's faith in the minds of men. He says that beautifully like that. He simply says the wisdom of God is being challenged by the wisdom of man everywhere. Huh? You read 1 Corinthians 1, 17 through 25 when you get home. Uh, the humanist mind is trying to overthrow the wisdom of God. And, and, and right now, while you sit there and get ready to believe and accept, somebody of you said, don't do it. Huh? And inside of you, when you become convinced of the fact, It ain't all that is pretended. Wait! So you fall on the unbelief looking for the schism behind you. Huh? Even your heart says yes. Your mind says yes. The spirit in you says yes. The hopes in you says yes. Everything about you says I want to. 
But something in you says, don't do it. question today, and the question that at stake today is, to believe or not to believe? That's the question. You see, for life boils down to what one is willing to believe or disbelieve that makes a difference in life. That's, that's where it's at. For what you believe or disbelieve determines your destiny. And that's where it's at. The great question upon which the answer to everything a real importance in your life depends upon can it thou be lead? And that, that's what it depends. If thou canst believe, then everything is possible. If thou canst not, then nothing is possible. That's what it boils down to. It's an either or situation. But what you believe or disbelieve determines your destiny. Joshua was confronted Israel with this problem. If you recall in his book in the 24th chapter, 2015 verse, when, when he gathered the rebellious people of Israel together and confronted them with the fact of belief, he said, choose you this day whom you will serve. Ah, but as for me and my house, we'll take the law. Huh? I'll believe in him. I'll take the God who brought me out of Egypt and brought me over through the Red Sea and kept me in the wilderness for 40 years. I'll take that God. But if you feel strongly led by the gods on this side, then you take them. Huh? But you got to make a choice. You got to either believe or disbelieve. You got to make a decision. As to where you gonna stand. A lot of folk, a lot of folk in church today, coming to church every day, but can't make a decision. Can't decide. It's like that lady, oh Lord, oh devil. They, they don't know where to stand. Huh? Elijah met this problem at Mount Carmel in the book of Kings, the 18th chapter. They were wrestling between that of God of Baal and, and, and God Jehovah. You remember when he brought them up there to the testing time and had the barrels of water and had the trench dug and the altar built and the sacrifice laid on it? And he said, now, now the God that answered by fire, let him be God. But, but the first thing he said to them, how long will you halt between the pigeons? Huh? How long? How long? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. But you ought to make up your mind. You ought to decide what you're going to believe in and who you're going to believe in and why you believe what you're going to believe. You ought to come to some conclusion. It's a dangerous thing to pussyfoot. Huh? Just catch your pussyfoot and then you won't make it in. Don't be caught that way. It's a bad time to try to make a decision in a disaster situation. That's a hard time to make a decision. I don't like making decisions in hard times. You know, spontaneous and emergency situations. That's a bad time to make decisions. You ought to make decisions now. You ought to think about it now. Well, let, let me pause here to clear up uh, another question, and I won't be long. Somebody says it doesn't really matter what you believe. So long as it's sincere, you're sincere in your belief. Well, I have to put the fly in your buttermilk again. Huh? I'm afraid that's wrong. See, you could be sincerely wrong. Huh? You could be sincerely wrong. And for the lack of a better illustration, let me be hypothetical at this point. Let's say a man is sincere about flying the Texas, but he boards a plane that's powered by a chimpanzee. Huh? Now, now he's serious about going to Texas, but he's made choice of the wrong pilot. Huh? 
You, you understand what I mean? Huh? Amen, huh? Paul, Paul and Silas in the Philippian jail cast in there and locked in stocks and set guard on. You remember what happened when the earthquake came? The jail rock and stocks fell off and when the light came on, everybody was free. And the captain of the prison who kept the garrison took his sword out to take his life. And Paul said, stay your head, we're all here. And his first question to Paul was, what must I do to be saved? Huh? And listen to Paul's answer. Paul said, simple, just believe in the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. Huh? And that's all he said. He said, an act of your faith determines how you shall make it here. That's all he said. Now, don't you know that in your life too? An act of your faith determines whether you're going to be with God for eternity or separated from him for eternity. That's what it depends. It depends upon whether you live your life guarded by man's wisdom, which is humanism, or God's wisdom, which is Christianity. Either one will affect the way you live and where you spend eternity. But now, it, it, it's not strange. It's not strange that men that have those difficulties in their faith. But since the fall, it's been the most difficult thing of all of man's actions and reactions. Huh? It's to have faith. The difficulties have affected him in every era of his life. So it's not a strange thing that we wrestle with it. Man suffers under intellectual difficulty. Huh? He suffers from a, tie, a true belief in God. He hasn't gotten past Satan's suggestion in the garden yet. Yea, God knows that today ye eat of the fruit of the tree, ye shall be God knowing good from evil. Now man's problem is, intellectually, he still thinks he can outsmart God. Now that's his problem. Huh? That's the problem. You read the first chapter of Romans, huh? 21 through 23. When he knew God, he didn't want to own him and acknowledge him as God, huh? But rather he made God like creatures, like four-footed beasts and creeping things of the earth and would not acknowledge God as God. That's man's problem, huh? He suffers from an intellectual problem. That's why 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Uh, it's impossible for the human mind to understand the spiritual mind without accepting the spiritual fact of life. You've got to come to that. You've got to believe that God is, and that he's a reward to them that diligently seek him. Once you reach that point, then you're all right. Uh -huh. Then you're all right. You, you got to believe without seeing something. Huh? You got to put hope and faith that it is. That's what you got to do. Man suffers from intellectual difficulties in his faith. His reasoning get in the way of his power of belief. And every time he look at something, he wants to reason it and rationalize it out without just accepting it because God said it. Now, I, I like that bumper sticker that said, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. That's the end to it. That's the end to it. Huh? I had an atheist once to tell me he believed in God, and God would stop the sun at a certain hour of the day and let it hold that for so long as he said. I told him, no, you wouldn't. He said, why wouldn't I? It's because you try to find out the scientific mathematical reason of what caused it to stop. Huh? You don't need your son to stop to believe God. Just believe him. That's what faith is anyhow. Just believe it because he said it. Hey, faith is the substance of a thing hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the fathers obtain a great repose. That's all it is. Man suffers from intellectual difficulties in his faith. He got the power within him, but he's got difficulties in him believing it. That's his problem. Then, then man suffers from moral difficulties. He suffers from moral difficulties in his faith. Huh? The moral characteristics of our age are not favorable to faith at all. Huh? 
Man in his moral state prefers evil rather than the good. Uh, he, he's more prone to what's bad rather than what's good. I think that's why Jesus said men love darkness because they need the evil and they hate to come to the light for the light exposes their sin. It, it makes it hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easy to work in the shop. <laughs> yeah. Because of this moral deficiency, Satan has us thinking that God won't save us or heal us because we are so bad. Got to suffer from moral deficiencies and difficulties. Lord, you won't save me because I, I done done this and I've been that and, and I'm in that and this and that and, and, and a whole lot of folk are lost due to unbelief because of their sin. That's it. But, but listen, Ezekiel 18, it says, uh, the soul that sinned it should die, but have I any pleasure at all that a man should die and not live? Huh? God said, I should not let the father's bad iniquity of the son, nor the son the iniquities of the father. But let a man forsake his ways and ungodly man his thoughts and return unto me. And I would abundantly pardon him of his sins. And all of his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live and shall not die. All you've got to do is just turn from your wicked ways and come on, I'll take care of that business. God saves us in spite of, not because of. That's what the court was trying to say when he said he looked beyond our fault and saw our needs. That's what the court was saying. Uh, that's what he was trying to express. God didn't save me because I had something. No, no, God saved me because I was simple enough to believe him that he could do it. That's why he saved me. I was able to express that simple idea of faith in a dying son on an old Roman cross. And early on Sunday morning, he got up. That all power in heaven and earth is entrusted in my hands. Newman, if you can believe this, all things are possible. I believe it. I believe it. Man suffers from moral difficulties in his faith. Not only that, but man suffers from difficulties of inconsistency of professing Christian life. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's a little hard one. Huh? Yes, yes, we suffer because of the lies of those who are supposed to believe. We do. It makes it hard for somebody to get up from the back row because of somebody they see in the front row. It makes it hard. It makes it hard. Believers, believers sometimes can become stumbling blocks in the pathways of unbelief. Amen, huh? But, but, but let, let, me, let me step a step farther, uh, a little deeper with you on this. Uh, 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 Sometimes it's not so much in the wrong we do in life. Huh? You, you, you see, unbelievers, most unbelievers can forgive us for an act of sin. Because they know we're human. And we're made up in the same black fashion as they are. And that yet we will stumble and fall sometimes. So an unbeliever can forgive us for a sin. But you know what an unbeliever can't forgive us for? An unbeliever can't forgive us for what we can't exercise in our own faith. That's what he can't forgive us for. Huh? He can't forgive us for a lack of our faith. Huh? No, no, he can't. That, that was the man's problem in this text. You see, his problem in this text was a lack of the disciples' faith to heal this boy. Uh, you see, when he brought him, he thought they could. But when he found out they couldn't, it lessened his faith in the fact that it could be done. You go around complaining and murmuring about your strife and trouble of life. Watch yourself. You're blocking somebody's faith. You've got to remember that God is able. And you've got to trust that he's able. Being his child, you've got to call on him. Say, I'm your child. Move the stumbling block. Hey. That, that's what I like about the port. Say, Lord, Lord, don't move the mountain. Just give me strength to climb it. Lord, don't move the stumbling block. Just lead me, Lord, along them. That's all I want. 
I want the opportunity to be like Caleb, to exemplify my faith in you. I want to be able, like Caleb, to say, give me that mountain. Give it to me, Lord. Give it to me, Lord. When it gets too tough for everybody else, give it to me, Lord. Give it to me. Let my faith in thee be the exemplification of the glory and honor that you have in this land. Give it to me, Lord. That's what you got to do. You got to put forth your faith in a positive action that God can, God will, God is able. Oh, you got to hold on to that belief in the word where He says that He's able to give us above and beyond all that we ask or think. He can do it. He can do it. I tell you, you got to be able. Don't block nobody's way with a poor faith. Don't do it. Yeah, 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 man suffers from the difficulty of the inconsistency of the professing life of the Christian. He suffers. But now, I can't let the God believe all that he's been. I can't let you get away because that's not all the truth. That's only half the truth. That, that's not the end of the story. There's more to be added to this thing. You see, for in the bottom line, the true difficulty is our own constitution to exert our individual wills. Now, that's what Jesus is saying here. He said, I know, I know what my disciples couldn't do. I, I understand that. And I know that it might have lessened your faith. I, I know that. And I know now it's got you doubting me that I can do it. I know that. But, 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 but the real healing still lies in the constitution of your own will. Are you willing to believe? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you willing to believe that I can do it? Do you think that it can be done? It lies within you yet. Oh, I'll tell you. You see, no matter what anybody else says about us, huh, it's still up to us what we're going to do. Huh? It's still up to us. Huh? We are still endowed with the power and freedom to arrange our beliefs and form our own philosophies of what we should believe or disbelieve. Huh? You see, I don't care what you tell me about red and white, good or bad, difference or indifference. I still have to determine whether I believe it or not. It's still in me. Uh, it's still in me, huh? And whether it's truth or fiction, I still have to make the decision. That, that's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying here that uh, the battle that's raging in your soul is your soul's decision. You got to decide. You got to come to a conclusion. You got to make the opinion. You got to come to the final answer, I believe. Huh? You got to do it. If you don't do it, you'll never get out of that seat and accept Christ. If you don't do it, you'll never look for the healing of a headache. If you don't do it, you'll never look to get up off of a sick bed. If you don't do it, it's in you. Let me see if I can close. What, what, what shall we do then with our disbelief? What, what shall we do with them? I say, first of all, resist them. I didn't say deny them because they're there. I don't believe denial will send a problem away. I, I'm not like Christ. <laughs> Amen. I don't deny a headache when I got one. I don't deny arthritis when it's there. I don't deny I got a toothache. No, I resist it. That means I do something about it. I fight it with everything I got to fight it with. Resist it. Huh? Resist it. That's the first thing. And, and then pray against it. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Jesus said that this comes about through prayer and fasting. Pray about it. When it gets too hard, pray 
about it. When it gets too difficult, pray about it. Prayer changes things. Pray about it. Pray about it. Pray about it. We must not allow them to keep us away from Jesus Christ. Don't let them stop you. Don't let them stop you. Yeah, yeah, they'll try to block your pathway and impede your progress, but don't let them stop you. Keep on crawling. We must take them to him as we do all our other sins and infirmities and cry like this man, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Ah, that's what we got to do. Take him to him, huh? That's what the poet said, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. I, I declare he'll help you. God will help you, I said. Jesus says all things are possible to God if we believe. Let, let, let me tell you what it will do for you if you can believe. Let, let me tell you what it will do for you. First of all, it will satisfy your longings for God. Uh, you quit wondering whether he is, you'll know it. Uh, it will satisfy your longings. Because once you hung and thirst after righteousness, the Bible says you shall be filled. Your soul will catch on fire like the psalmist said about his soul in the 42nd number of Psalms. My soul thirst after God. My soul thirst after the living God. Oh, he'll satisfy you, I tell you. It'll satisfy your longings for God. You won't have to ask somebody else to pray for you. You can go to the secret closet your own self and close your own door and say, Father, I'm your child. And you said whatsoever I ask you for, you give it to me. And here I am. <laughs> you can do that for your own self because he's your father. He be your God and you're his child. And, and you have no problems with prayer like that. It'll bring a satisfying consolation to you that, that God walks with you and he talks with you and he tells you you're his own. That's what God will do. And not only that, but it will clear your conscience. If you talk about a clear conscience, you see, right now, uh, it'll implant a new, uh, implant a new spiritual life in your mind, giving you a, a new strength and a new hope to fight against evil. My God, uh, well, you, you know what it'll do? It'll take out of your mind those old dirty jokes would block your own impeding progress to talk to the Father. It'll take out of your mind that dirtiness that keeps you from getting through. And it'll restore in your mind a new view about God and, and about Christ Jesus and about the unctions and works of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it'll give you a new incentive to fill your mind with the Holy Writ of God. It'll do those things for you. It'll clean your conscience up. And then thirdly, it'll change your moral nature. Yeah, you know how we had trouble with the moral nature back from the beginning of time, but it'll change your nature. I tell you, it'll make out of you a new creature. You won't no longer question God's ability. You won't no longer think you're smarter than he is, but you'll realize that he can open doors that no man can shut and shut doors that your enemies try to get through. You will acknowledge his power. Good God from glory. It'll change your nature. Tell the things you used to do, you won't do no more. I tell you what it'll do. It won't change the color of your eyes and make them turn blue. It won't change your hair and make it turn gray. It won't cause you to grow and it's taller than you already are. But oh, God of mercy, it'll change your ways. Good God of mercy, so much and so that when you look at your hands, your hand will look new. When you look at your feet, they will too. When you start out to walk, you will have a new walk. When you start out to talk, you will have a new talk. It'll change your nature. It'll make you a new creature. God of mercy, I tell you, I don't know about you, but, but my nature's been changed. That's why I walk like I walk. That's why I talk like I talk. That's why I sing like I sing. Because my nature has been changed. I'm born again. God from glory. Yay, the old nature. The old nature's laid dormant. 
And good God of mercy, I can come on now. <laughs> but let me go on to a close. Right. I'm trying to keep from getting too happy here. <laughs> but let me tell you what else it'll do. It'll give you positive assurance about truth and what truth is. <laughs> Jesus said, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. <laughs> You'll know that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no man cometh to the Father but by him. You won't be guessing about your salvation. you know it to be a fact. You'll run down the street saying, I'm saved. I'm saved. And I'm glad about it. I'm saved. Daylight done struck in my soul. My feet have been loose from the mar and clay. My straggling tongue have been cut loose. I'm saved. Hallelujah, I'm saved. I'm saved. And I'm glad I'm saved. Yay! Hey! That's what you'll go say. You'll be assured of your faith. You won't have to guess about it. If somebody asks you where you bound, you can speak up with confidence. I'm bound. I'm bound for the heavenly land. I'm bound for gain and land. I'm bound for another life on the other side. I'm bound for a city whose streets are made like gold, whose gates are like pearls, whose walls are like jasper. I'm bound for no more dying and no more crying. Yay! It'll give you an assurance of your faith. You won't have to guess about it. But good God of mercy, it'll give you something else. It'll give you comfort in your trials in life. It'll give you comfort when the road gets hard, when the way gets long, when troubles invade your life, you don't know which way to turn. Doors are shut in your face. Enemies on every hand. You don't know where to go. Good God from glory. And look, every time you do one step, you fall back too. But it'll give you an assurance that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. It'll give you assurance of a strong comfort in him that he won't let you fall, that he won't let you be lost, that he can't lose you. If your hand's in his, and his and yours, all the devils in hell can't pluck you out. I don't care what the wild may come. God and glory. Yay. There's another thing that'll do for you. It promises solutions to all of your problems. I ain't got time to work with it, but I tell you, we'll do that for you. I like the poet when he sings, tempted and try it. I've made to wonder why it should be thus all the day long when there are others living about us never molested though in the wrong but listen at the encore listen at the echo cheer up my brother live in the sunshine we'll understand it all better by and by yeah God and glory I gotta move on I got to move on. It meets the desires for right living in God. I said it meets the desires for right living in God. It makes us fit subjects for the kingdom of glory. When you believe, it makes you all right to get on the inside. For Paul said, by faith. Uh, through grace uh, are we saved uh, and not by works uh, lest any man should boast uh, it's the gift from God uh, by faith uh, God of mercy, uh, by faith uh, if you only believe uh, not only that uh, but it cancels the fear of death uh, I said it cancels out the fear of death uh, we live under fear uh, that death will take us all uh, and disrobe us now uh, from what we here possess, that death will rob us of our homes, of the love of our families. Death will rob us of all we have here. But listen what Paul said, don't worry about death, for if this earth, the house of the tabernacle, be dissolved, I got another building, not made by hand, but eternal in the heaven. Yeah, yeah. Death had no power. 
And Father, my brethren, remember every age has been through man's faith that's brought about everything he needs. It's what brought it all through. It's brought it all together in the first place. Without faith, the disciples would never have left their fishing boats. Without faith, Matthew would have never closed up his tax books and followed Jesus. Without faith, Peter never would have walked on the threatening waves of the sea. Without faith, the woman at the well would never invite the whole town to see a man that told me everything I'd done. Without faith, David wouldn't have slain Goliath. Without faith, the Hebrew boys wouldn't have stood the fiery furnace. Without faith, Joshua wouldn't have marched around Jericho. Without faith, Gideon wouldn't have conquered with the 300 number men. Without faith, Martin Luther King Jr. wouldn't have combated the dogs and the anti-airs down in Birmingham, Alabama. Without faith, citizens of Zion would still be there on a little tree corner on 103rd Street. Without faith, we couldn't have made it over. With faith, you can do all things. Somebody said, how did you get this far? Somebody said, how did you do it? Somebody said, you don't have money? How did you do it? Somebody said, you don't have power. How did you do it? Somebody said, ain't nobody on your side. How did you do it? But yeah, all my answer is, I've come. I said, I've come this far by faith. Faith can move mountains. Faith can open up the fountains. Faith, good God of mercy. Without it, I said, without it, without it. The heaven won't be your home. Without faith, there'll be no Jerusalem. Without faith, there'll be no pearly gates. Without faith, there'll be no walls of Jasper. Without faith, you won't walk the streets and put on golden slippers and wear a white robe and have a golden head round about you. Without faith, faith, faith will get you on the other side. Faith will make it all worthwhile. Faith, good God from glory. Let me tell you about faith. I got a prime example of what faith can do in the times of deep trouble, in the times of disaster, when God is on every hand, when you got to have faith and difficulties in your life. I think about Jesus out on an old Roman cross. I think about him out there dying for the sins of the world. I think about him out there when the difficulties got in his way and tried to cloud his faith. I think about him out there when he hung from the sixth to the ninth hour. I heard him say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Difficulty got in the way, but he pulled off difficulty and grabbed hold to his faith said into thy hands I commend my spirit through his head to the locks on his shoulder and gave up the ghost hey! and it paid off I said it paid off so early 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 on Sunday morning hey I better end that Would you come by faith this morning? Would you come by faith, children? Come by faith this morning. Only believe.